I think we're better at setting people up than setting ourselves up. Oh, <laughs> I was. Oh, never mind. Maybe I shouldn't. No, say I say it. it. Oh, no. I love uh, it. Say uh, it. Say it. He oh, just pointed me. So embarrassing. What? What the f is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Unwax Podcast with your favorite sisters, Sophia and Sistine. I feel at home again. I'm so happy to be back in the studio. It's I been know. so long. Oh, yeah. The last episode, we were Zoom. I completely forgot about that. And then we were in Florida. Yeah, Zoom in Florida. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, well, it's I... nice to be back. It's more organized. I feel like the lighting for me was heinous. I was sitting in mom's bathroom when I was doing it last time. That wasn't pretty... This bitch complains all. about lighting 24-7. This bitch, com you're the one that brings Buy a ring, ring light if you hate it so much. You bring in ring lights all the time. You're the ring light master. And who looks good? Can I make a comment? If we're going to continue this train of roasting you, two red flags, actually, that I'm looking at right now. Two? Um, two, yes. Number one, I understand you love this crew neck, but you've worn it four days in a row. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not kidding you guys. She's worn it to two dinners in public. <laughs> And you wanted around the house. I hope so. Because the first time, <laughs> no, 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 it gets better. When Sophia finds one article of clothing that she just loves, she wears the shit out of it. Yeah. And then you buy every color. So yeah. I've seen you in the same pants, sweatpant, yoga, tight. You know those ones that kind of make your hips look like body, yaddy, yaddy? Yes. You know what I mean? You've been wearing those in every color with this hoodie. I bought a matching one to match this so i walk in and her and her boyfriend are there and i'm like i look like i should actually be in veil well no you look it was very princess Thank diana you. But by the way you complained and you were like i need one well and so i bought it for thing. her i liked it until you wore it out for me and i'll tell you what triggered me <laughs> you walked into the living room yesterday in the same outfit that i've seen you go out twice before and i go sophia it's time to switch it up a little bit you're really on a roll. I've had such a hard morning. Are you <laughs> number two? That triggers me right now. You bought this water bottle. Yeah, it's two liters. Two liters, and Sophia is so dedicated to drinking two liters of water a day. Yeah. Well, okay, because I realized my New Year's resolution is a little bit vague, and so I thought, you know, I need to have a bit more structure. So I'm meditating, okay. journaling. And drinking two liters of water every day. No, let me ask I've you this. I've gone to the bathroom eight times already, and it's not even 10 o'clock. That's part of the reason why I won't jump on this trend. I hate... <laughs> knock off my computer, why don't you? I hate going to the restroom. I know that sounds really weird, <laughs> but I actually... <laughs> no, I you know. just hold it until you're... I, I hold it until I'm actually in physical pain. And I have to, like, waddle. No, like, you know, I, I look like I'm four months pregnant. Yeah. I just hate well, it. Well, no, actually, I know that... She never goes to the bathroom before long car rides. And it makes me so yeah. angry because then she's yelling in the car of how much pain she's in. And she takes it out on everyone when it's her freaking bladder. That's the only thing that's causing her to be a brat. So we need to move just... out. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you're just going to announce it. Wait, also, why don't you actually share the truth to the listeners? You owe them that. Mm. Where did you find out you're going to start doing this two liter water bottle? trend a lot of these really pretty girls on tiktok made me insecure that i wasn't having my life in structure so i figured they said my life is structured and pretty can this we talk about do. that so i figured i'd copy them let's break that down those videos that these girls post on their reels and their tiktoks look so stunning and they're I like know. how to be that girl in 2022 and they wake up and it has beautiful their candles are lit when they wake up you open and up the screens and it's a view of a city yeah and their bedroom is just stunning and they're making their bed okay and then they're working out and drinking water yeah. and having lemon in it i mean it's too aesthetic perfect no, I know. but can you imagine how hard it is to actually make those videos no think it's hard i think how many tripods they have everywhere because yeah. they're not recording on their hand they're like holding it their their bodies are in every single yeah. shot i know i think a lot of people make fun of content creators thinking like oh my god it's so stupid but it's a lot harder than listen i tried to make a video i wanted to be that girl and i was like mm, maybe i'll widen my range of what i'm posting i'll do a a baking my famous scones right and I had oh, I a ring light above my step-by-step -step, and I looked at it and I tried to edit it together and it was so disgusting. Did you see my oatmeal video I posted on TikTok? Yeah, that was so <laughs> weird. 
<laughs> it was heinous because I'm trying to smash a banana holding a phone while also stirring at like, the same time. Like, how do you time. make it look cute? And someone literally commented that she looks like she's struggling because <laughs> the camera was so shaky. But you know what else is popping up on TikTok? And you wrote this down, but it reminded me was you were saying getting the ick. I've seen a lot of girls doing this as a trend. I love this trend. Yeah. Because... I am like the ickiest person ever and things trigger me with people I'm, so easily. Sistina, I didn't want to go on a date with a guy because his chest hair was patchy. I mean, if anyone has the dumbest is things that, to get rid of a guy for, it's me. Is that ick or picky? That's ick. Okay. Well, I was actually talking about this with a group of friends. Yeah, I said group of friends, you guys. I'm expanding. She has more than one? I'm expanding. And we were talking about girls and guys, things that just give them the ick. Mm -hmm. And some of them were so funny. Like one person said, watching a guy put on socks that are the no-show socks, but not wearing the (laughs) no-show socks, but the act of watching him put it on Mm. gives ick. What do you think about that? The act of him putting on the no-show socks. Yeah, they just look cringy. Yeah, that looks kind of weird. How about shazamming a song in the club? Or ick. How about this? Or when when you do a baby voice and they mimic it. Mm. Oh god, god, god. Ugh, I can't. I, I always, just like you can't do it. Like you can't copy the same thing I'm doing. It just We always say too like, when a guy mm. is trying no. to respond to say if he posted a really hot photo and he responds with the exploding head emoji. <laughs> <laughs> I got one recently Girl. and I literally just I couldn't no I just want to block you after I wanted that. to send the emoji with like a surgical mask on like I'm sick yeah just get away from away me from or me. when they spell they are as t-h-e-i-r mm. go back to school when a guy asks for your snapchat and not your phone number that's just that's just really sketchy that is sketchy do you remember mm. creepy hinge chef yeah. Whoa. This throwback. man was like 28 asking for my Snapchat. I was dumb enough to give it and I I got unwarranted selfies all day long. All the time. That's ick when a guy sends a selfie with, hey, did I ask for that? I have another one. I don't like a guy that wears too many rings, especially uh, on their pinky. I don't pinky? mind. I'm sorry if you guys have any rings Ooh, on the pinky. I see you have a ring. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, he does have it on his pinky. <laughs> oh, I got one. Females that have a toe ring. Ick. I hate that. Oh my I god! I thought that was gonna be in for a second. I got one. No, <laughs> no. A couple months ago, and I tried it. No one knew. I just wanted to wear it to see how. <laughs> it wasn't my vibe. First of all, we've already it had a discussion on the show about your toes, and that you can <laughs> pick up anything with them. Your toes are basically hands. And now my fingers are literally chodes. <laughs> She's talking about her nails. nails. They're not good. No, they're horrible because they all fell off. And now I had to cut them, and now they look like nubs. If you guys have been watching this episode, I'm you just look like you have Megan hands. Fox's um, thumbs. Oh my god! Yeah, I forgot that she had interesting looking thumbs. Yeah, and she's getting married now. Woo! Okay, we both thought this. Did anyone think the engagement video was a little weird? You the sound what? effects were like like chirping and birds and okay, and chirping. And birds, I totally thing. agree with that, and I would also like to say, I was there firsthand to see this love blossom if you will i was there for the first interaction she was no one knows and i think no one cares she told me the inside scoop and she was there when he was like with his other girl well the funny thing is Mm -hmm. i was sitting outside of my trailer trying to get noticed by machine gun kelly (laughs) (laughs) it could have been you it could have been me but then of course megan walks by and i was like i'm gonna go back in my trailer i'm going also you were dressed like a prostitute which you thought would have helped not really no it did a lot of like dark circles yeah i looked actually disgusting it's okay let's talk about how on the last episode you were mentioning that you got me this beautiful christmas gift we're going to the king's game yeah. Sitting on the ice. I booked a whole night for her. I took her on a date. Well, we were separated for like two, three weeks. Yes. I'm like, this is going to be a reunion where we catch about anything. We like didn't tell each other anything for these two or three weeks. So we had a lot to talk about. That's true. About her New Year's and my New Year's and your boyfriend and not my boyfriend. And so... Kind of. We're not getting into this. Sophia. No. I think you owe it to the listeners <laughs> My to friend be is in honest. the back. She's nodding. Stop, Gabby. <laughs> I can't. No, it's not. I'm not dating anyone. But... In I'm this not, area not code. dating anyone. In the area and, code. Stop! Hose in every area code? <laughs> it sounds so bad because it's not... Because it's true. It is true. It's not true. Um, am I denying or confirming? Okay, so <laughs> I took Sistine out to a restaurant and we went to a Kings game. 
we were front row on the ice. Yeah. Like right in front of the screen where uh, you can literally hear a hockey puck. That sounds like a gunshot when it gets hit on the wall. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize how loud that sound We were was. slapping the glass. Well, at first we weren't. This is the thing. When we get there, we're the only ones in non-Jersey gear at all. We're the yeah. only ones that genuinely did not know anything about hockey. Especially if you're sitting front row, you know those are diehard fans. Die hard. And Sophie and I literally didn't even know how many quarters were in a hockey game. Not only that, it was a Rangers game. So if you guys know Rangers, New York, they're really diehard fans yeah. as well. So you have like two very very popular teams playing against each other. I had other. so many accents in my ears the whole time, which I loved. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was a lot going on. The kid behind us, go Wangers! Yeah, he <laughs> couldn't get his R's. Wangers. Wangers. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. That kid, although he was passionate, his dad was so aggressive in heckling that the kid started heckling. Yeah. And it got borderline inappropriate for a kid his age to be heckling i don't know yeah well this guy was like go kings the kid's like shut up and the guy's like look at the scoreboard kid yeah and the dad goes well look at the stats overall the reason you no know, so it was the whole funny. time there was like this this five-year-old arguing with this grown-ass man grown-ass sitting man. next like to me 45 years old. and i was like is this a joke but just yeah. because this kid is a rangers fan and you're a kings fan yeah i mean it got a little crazy and sophie and i were saying look this kid's gonna grow up to be an absolute dog on wall street like he he is that he's like a little Jordan Belford in the making. Yeah, he definitely was a little bit aggressive. He's gonna be on so aggressive. But I think the craziest part about it also was when we were first there for the first. There's three periods. I think that's what it's called. I yes, I didn't realize that. I looked it up because I had no idea. I was like, oh god, if this is four, I don't know how long I can stay here for. But the first, it's period, only an hour. I know <laughs> we're acting like it's like 14 hours, but everyone's standing up, banging on the glass. We were frightened. Yeah. Second, third, we got jerseys, we got hats. We're screaming and hitting the wall. And everyone's like, who are these chicks? They went from like the first period of having absolute thinking that every hockey player is potentially making eye contact with them to being like heckling the uh, Rangers. No, but you know what I thought was kind of funny? I think Sophia and I were trying to be like those girls in the front. Like puck bunnies? <laughs> <laughs> like a hockey whore. <laughs> You're dressed like hockey horse. I was, uh, we had our hair blown out. I was sucking on a lollipop. Yeah, she was sucking on a lollipop. I was like, what did she have a lollipop? We were trying so hard to be like, notice me. I want to make eye contact with one of the and players. The best part is that we can't really see their faces because they're wearing helmets but and half their teeth are so gone. So the only one that looked at us the entire game was a man that had no, no teeth. teeth. <laughs> no teeth. So... All in all, it was a great day. I would love for you to take me out some more. I think you're my, should I call you daddy now? Like, what are you, what is this relationship? Yeah, daddy works. Okay. I felt really good, actually. Okay. I just took it Then you are daddy. Oh, I love it. Um, you mentioned that you had something happening in the oh, airport. I want to explain this really quick because I didn't tell Sistine this story, but it was the funniest experience I've ever had. So um, I had this insane airport experience. And anyone that was traveling over the holidays knows how insane the airport was. It, it was, was a like, zoo. Yeah. Cancellations, people screaming, people fighting over their seats. Like, it was just chaos. So I'm in Florida waiting for my flight to go directly back to L.A. And the gate next to me was going to New York. And so apparently I think all of the people that were going to JFK had to switch their flight over to the other flight. And you can just see people running back and forth. So all of the L.A. people are waiting outside their gate because um, it was delayed and mm-hmm. like the catering service wasn't done yet. And I was like, I don't care about the food. Just get me on the flight. It's like 10 o'clock at night. The gate next to us is going to New York. The lady goes, everyone, this is last call for boarding, last call for boarding. We are about to close the gates. And so we're all just standing there. We're waiting. We're waiting. And we hear this girl screaming, going, mm-hmm. wait, don't close it. And we're like, oh, my God. So she she gets in, basically. The gates are still open. She goes, yeah, yeah, ma'am, you have time. Just get on the flight. She goes, no, no, wait. My boyfriend's not here. He has to make it. Uh, Tommy, get your ass over here. They're closing the gates. Tommy, I know you're hungry. And so we're all like, what I the I know heck? you're hungry. She's, She's like, I'm out of Chili's to go. And then, I got to get my order. And so we're she's standing there for five minutes. And the girl's like, okay, ma'am, we actually need to close the gate now. Like, we're going to be late for the... T- no, like, but what about Tommy? Stop. So she gets up. She goes, no, wait. Tommy screaming through the terminal. Oh my God, it's like a movie. I'm not even done. We're all like, where the hell is Tommy? We're all like looking around. Everyone's invested. It it gets even worse. So then the lady, so she's standing on the other side. The lady starts closing the the door. The girl, who's like 25 years old, holding the door open, going, no, 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 my boyfriend needs to come on. Tommy, come on. 
Tommy. And all of us are kind of going, Tommy? Tommy? <laughs> like, all of us are getting invested. And we're running. She's like, wait, that's him. That's, I think that's him in the gray hat. Wasn't him. And they start, they actually had to pull people off of her to get her off the gate and go, ma'am, we're closing the door. It's either you're in or you're out. They closed the door. No. Suddenly, a minute, we're all like, oh, shit, Tommy. Tommy's gone. Tommy. He didn't make it. Tommy. He looks like Chris Pratt from, um, from like, Parks and Rec that time. Love. Running. No, babe. Like, hitting the door. And we're all like, oh, no. No. He missed his flight. It was just, like, the most chaotic thing. And it was, like, people had to, like, pull him off the door because he was, like, crying. He's like, I'm so sorry, babe. He's crying. But I didn't mean to miss my flight. That's I was kind hungry. of romantic. I mean, kind of. But so he walks away. And all of us, this one lady stops. She goes, are we fucking punked here? Like it was like it was a, literally at least six minutes straight of chaos, and we're all like, at least something crazy we happened all, to you yeah. on a flight. I know, but people walked away. He walked away. And we're like, Tommy, good job. And he's like, Sorry guys, I hope sorry, you guys. enjoyed that burrito. It was great. Hope it was it, worth it. I think it was like a Reuben sandwich. He just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so actually, that was my airport experience. I thought it was hilarious. Because I um, I hadn't seen anything. I like actually that. just wanted to share this because it's kind of random, but you know how Sophia is the reader, and she's such a bookworm. Well, I started getting into some poetry and I actually saved a poem that I thought I should read for you and you might like and maybe the listeners might like it. I have literally no idea what she's talking okay. about. <laughs> Roses are red. Violets are blue. We love shave balls. How about you, baby? That's right. This is a manscaped ad. Bow, 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 bow. It's your line, Sophia. Wait, we're doing it now? Yes. Good! You guys, Valentine's Day is coming and we know just the gift to give that special someone for all and any special occasions. This Valentine's Day, it's time to give them the gift that 4 million men worldwide trust from Manscaped, the leaders in the below waist grooming. So use our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code UNWAXED for 20% off plus free shipping. You guys, I know the holidays just went light speed by. So if you didn't give him the gift that he was dying for, make sure you give him the right gift this time. And that is the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped. Let me tell you, this product he's absolutely going to love in the package. It is the Lawn Mower 4.0. And I'm a big fan of the Lawn Mower 4.0. Yeah, Their electric that. trimmer is designed to trim the hair on the loose skin. Yay. And get this, the trimmer's <laughs> advanced skin safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on his Delicate little parts. Sistine. Yes. It's also waterproof. What? Right? If you knew that, you it's waterproof it too. So he can shave anything and everything in the shower so you can say goodbye to those little hairs left behind in the sink that we all, all hate. Buy little hairs. The package also includes the weed whacker, nose and ear hair trimmer to whack all of his worst weeds. To complete. The perfect package for his perfect package are their liquid formulations, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner. The deodorant helps his boys stay cool all day and the toner will keep him feeling his best all day and night. You guys, the formulations are cruelty-free, dye-free, paraben-free, and vegan. All the good stuff we love. Manscaped created products he's actually going to use after Valentine's Day. So go to manscaped.com for our exclusive 20% off plus free shipping with the code UNWAXED. His balls will thank you. Again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code UNWAXED at manscaped.com. Gift his Cupid and Arrow from Manscaped this Valentine's Day, baby. Ladies, going to the pharmacy in person is so 2021. You can get your birth control online, prescribed, and delivered for free with the Pill Club. Gain time and peace of mind back with the Pill Club. The licensed medical team puts your reproductive health first with access to affordable birth control, period care, and sexual wellness products with an online subscription. Life is stressful enough. Luckily, getting birth control and sexual wellness products can be one less thing you have to worry about. You guys, with the Pill Club, you won't have to wait in line for the doctor or at the pharmacy ever again. We all hate that. Thank so God. the Pill Club just delivers the birth control right to your door for free in discreet packaging along with some fun self-care gifts and goodies. Who doesn't want that? If you need to renew your birth control prescription, want to switch your birth control, or maybe even try it for the first time, the Pill Club medical team has your back. 
Get help finding the best option, whether it's a brand you know or not. The Pill Club carries over 120 FDA-approved brands and ships to all 50 states. So most of the birth controls are free with insurance or Medicaid. Otherwise, prices start as low as $7 a month without insurance. Come Want on. more than that? Their licensed medical team is just a text away to give you the best reproductive health care advice. You guys, this stuff is really important. So right now, if you go to thepillclub.com slash unwaxed, the Pill Club is offering $10 donation to bedsider.org for every unwaxed listener who becomes a patient. Come on. Your donation will help low-income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org. That's thepillclub.com slash unwaxed to get your first birth control care package and donate to help more women in need of affordable birth control. Remember, thepillclub.com slash unwaxed. You must use the link to make the donation. So you guys, we're so excited to have on this week's guest. This is someone we've been considering for a while. And at first it was a little tug and pull, but we got him on. You know, he is someone that we've known for a really long time. We've grown up in similar backgrounds. So I think it'll be really exciting to sort of hear things from his perspective because I don't think he's had the opportunity to sort of share his story. So we're excited to have him on the show today. So stay tuned. Okay, you guys, today we have on friend and long-awaited guest. He is a weightlifter, actor, podcaster, and on top of all of that, he can sell you a house. If you couldn't already <laughs> tell by the uncanny resemblance, he is also Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. We have the powerhouse, Joseph Baena. Yes, Joseph! Studio audience! Studio Against audience! All odds, he made thank it. you, thank you. By the way, <laughs> I nailed your last name. I got it. Yeah. Yes. After asking like three times. I know. Well, you know what? I struggle with it. So thank you so much for yeah. coming it's on okay. the show it's, today. It's better getting it than not. So I agree. That's true. Okay, That's true. I have so much I want to talk to you about, but let's talk about how we even first met. How long ago have this is it's been a while since we've known you. Yeah, well yeah. not that long actually. I feel like we met uh while I was still in college. That's yes. right. Yeah, because we met at your guys' Christmas your yes. famous annual Christmas party. <laughs> I know. Oh um, my god. Wait, Which I remember, like, when you're saying funny, that I remember the girlfriend you were dating in college, I was going out with her brother for like two seconds. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah. Wait, I'm trying. Your blonde girlfriend. I want to yes. call out her name. But, okay, and she had I a brother no and a names, sister. But that's so crazy, <laughs> Isn't that cra actually. Small, and I so remember funny. when I was going out with him, and this was my freshman year, I saw, he was like showing me photos of his sister. I was like, wait a minute. Like, I feel like I could familiar. See, yeah, I was like, wait a minute, I know who he is. And so I just figured I'm like small world. But. Yeah, I feel like he mentioned that. I was like, oh, that's cool. Did he? Oh, so that's great. I feel like, okay, so <laughs> technically we haven't. No. Oh, God. <laughs> I, yeah, so, I don't want to think so. <laughs> oh, oh, no. So technically we haven't known you for that long, but I feel like, you know, we have in a weird way. It's yeah. sort of like we've been in the fam for a very long time together. Obviously, our dads are extremely close. And, and then we right. have our wild holiday parties that. He's the only one down to hang out with us until I, late hours of the night. I do have oh, to say, Christmas Eve. <laughs> you are the last one standing at those parties. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> I was very embarrassed that last time. Why? Because, no, <laughs> why? Well, because let me tell you that just so everyone knows that this is a very family big thing. Like there's, yeah. there's really like older people mm -hmm. and then there's like us. Yeah, and that's true. There's like a small group of us, but yeah. I didn't start really hanging out with you guys at the parties until like the the last one that's which true was 2019 we, because i was yeah. like i didn't know anyone i was kind of like following my dad around right right and he's right. like introducing me to everyone i'm totally. like totally i'm like oh these girls are like really pretty oh, oh, no. like, oh, i don't know if i can yeah. really hang out we're running around <laughs> singing kind of a little tipsy like <laughs> yeah uh, being chaos. but this time i was like i was like finally chill like uh you guys made me feel all comfortable oh, and i was thanks. like this is a great party and you guys are like yeah let's do karaoke I got so drunk. <laughs> we all I got did. so it's like, okay. like my my dad was like, it was like ten thirty. My dad was like, "All right, Joe, like we're I'm I'm taking off. You wanna like what are you doing?" I was like, "Oh no, I got it." Like, <laughs> he's like, "I got one more song." I got another dad. song, so you go you go ahead. And I, I didn't realize that he was my ride. Like I didn't. Oh, right. He was my ride. So I was like, <laughs> like I stayed I stayed with you. Like we were yeah. singing karaoke. Everyone left. Everyone left. It was just us. It's yeah. like I looked up and like. Everyone was, was gone. gone. Yeah. yeah, it was what. I well, was like, I remember. What happened? First of all, the karaoke you killed it. I have videos on my phone of you singing, 
And no one was good that night. Sophia and I were rapping bust a move, which was embarrassing for all of us. Uh, the worst part was uh, Leonardo DiCaprio walked in the moment we were mid-song and I walked out. He was there? Yes. Yes. For two seconds. After seeing us sing, he left. He literally walks in, saw us sing. I doubt that this is it's probably the reason. together, but he like actually left the party. But so. <laughs> he's like, this is <laughs> he's like, this is not my party. <laughs> to, to truly uh, you know, hammer in the fact that you really were the last one standing. I remember um all of our uh, photos that we take at the end of the night we're all in matching pajamas and it's the cousins and then it's Joseph in the middle <laughs> wait you have a picture with me with you yes. guys yes yes and you're, the, you're the last it's wait, like you're I the non-family member I'll send it to you it's, you're like you're the lo- non-family member in this group which I think is just of like 17 girls so I just it's think it's like so hysterical. funny oh man I was like I was like what is going on because I w- again I was <laughs> pretty drunk I love it and I love it th- well they tricked me they they <gasps> They not tricked me, no. but I fell into the trap because you guys were like, we had done karaoke and everything. You guys were like, yeah, let's let's go to the bar. So we were hanging out at the uh, bar and you guys are talking to your girlfriends and I'm like chiming in. You guys are like, we're all laughing and stuff. And you guys are like, yeah, we're going to do kamikazes. And like, kamikaze. oh, God, did we on like, Christmas Eve? Too? <laughs> yeah. What's and wrong so with the, us? the guy. Yeah. But the bartender, he's like, I'm all out of shot glasses. So like, I'll just serve it to you guys in these cups. Oh, no. And no. I, I remember this so vividly because. <laughs> You, I was talking to you first and then you take it like half the shot and you're like, I can't finish this. And I'm like, oh, I'll take it. (laughs) So I take it and then our conversation like disperses for some reason. And then I go to you Uh and we're like having another conversation. You're like, oh, I can't finish (laughs) this. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll take it. (laughs) So a team player. Yeah. I love it. I'm like, let's freaking go. But like, well, you know what? You're a big guy. You can handle all those extra shots. Oh my god. Yeah, but yeah, when you guys were changing to the pajama, like the matching pajama, I had no idea what you guys were doing. I was just playing pool in your, oh, in yeah, your living room. This. I'm usually pretty good. Like I'm pretty good at pool. And okay. so all of a sudden I'm like, I'm missing everything. I'm Uh-oh. like, what's what's happening right now? This is so weird. And I forgot who I was playing with, but he was like, Yeah, what's like, what's up with you? And I was like, <laughs> Don't make me feel bad. <laughs> but then I lean on the on the stick and I'm like, oh. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I'm that, a little drunk. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when you take that moment and you reflect, you're like, wait, am I spinning or is the room spinning? It's, yeah. it's not when you go to the bathroom too that you realize that, like that's the that's bad. That was it. It was it was like that are. straight up like that meme where you like look yourself in the mirror and you're yes. just like Okay, like, I need to like splash together. some water. I love it. Why I got embarrassed was because I was literally like calling my my Uber to go home, mm-hmm. and then your dad comes out and he's like, he's like, Joseph, are are you leaving? Oh, oh my god! And I, was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh Sly, come god. on. That guy has no social cues. He doesn't know that that's rude to say to someone. Oh my god! No, but well, I, I, I knew like what he meant. I feel like you relate to it because I feel like our dads are very similar. Oh yeah, in that way, just, just like kind of so blunt, so, yeah, so blunt. They don't yeah. care. Like they don't mean anything ill will by it, but they're just like. Well, so I apologize for getting you so drunk, <laughs> um, but I don't Eve. regret it. No, not at all. It was great. It was a it was a really fun time. It but, was. Fun. Yeah. I love it. So I want to talk about your physique because I'm pretty sure your pecs walked into the room before you did, um, <laughs> and you're, so, you're they're, da- they're dancing. If you didn't notice, they're actually dancing oh my God, right he's now flexing. through a hoodie, which is oh, insane. No. Through a hoodie, keep that away from me. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I follow you on Instagram, and your Instagram is mostly just bodybuilder poses and you have an insane body and I can't even imagine the dedication and the hours that goes in to building that so what is that like for you every day what even wanted you to start that fitness journey well to start with what made me want to start that was I was actually really chubby in high school Mm -hmm. like really 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 overweight yeah like oh interesting going from uh middle school to high school that like transition no one looks where, good in that yeah, transition. No one, no one looks that. good. I had the braces and the was really overweight. But then I got into swimming. And oh. then swimming kind of just like made me get really cut. Mm-hmm. And I lost so much weight. Got mm-hmm. down to like 165 pounds, with, which is like really light yeah. for me. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, it's pretty skinny. But then college gained some of it back. Mm-hmm. The freshman 15. Of course. I per had that, usual. My freshman per 20. usual. Per usual. God, classic. It just, and it just sneak up on you. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Like the cafeteria food is just like, yeah. oh. And the drinking. All that, that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Good yes. times. Good times. <laughs> Good, great times. But then, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just started lifting weights as, uh, again. 
halfway through college and started seeing some progress. And um, I was so, I didn't want to go back to my high school shape of being mm -hmm. chubby again. Right. Because it made me really self-conscious. I've always mm -hmm. been really self-conscious about my body. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the main thing is like a mixture of body dysmorphia and like being self-conscious about my body. So it like pushed me to never go back mm -hmm. to being overweight. Going into my junior year of college, that's when I really just like went all out like two times a day, just training like intermittent fast. I was trying everything, oh. right? experimenting oh, with cool. ev anything and everything because I really believe that everyone's body, oh, excuse me, everyone's body's like so different. Mm -hmm. So your body reacts to different totally. diets and different yeah. training. I was just trying everything out. What fad did you try that you think is complete bullshit and what actually really worked, worked for, for you? you? That was the thing is like, I'm, I was so anti like, fad i was so okay. anti like fad diet i was just like i want to kind of do it in a way that works for me that makes sense for me because mm -hmm. i was doing meal prepping and like meal oh, prepping oh that's yeah. intense yeah. i was doing meal prepping for a little bit and it just wasn't useful to me because right. i like going out to eat and i stuff like, like yeah that. and like yeah i would prepare all these meals and then next thing you know i'm like going out to dinner and then i have a lunch and then it's just like they have all these, this food stacked up yeah but then the, the meals go to waste yeah mm -hmm. exactly. you know they go bad and i'm like well this sucks like i i hate wasting food and you yeah know. so you, it sounds like you live by like the 80 20 rule kind of like you enjoy things but then you also oh yeah really well. it's super like intuitive yeah yeah if i know that i'm gonna eat bad i'm either gonna train really extra hard or like extra long mm -hmm. before or after okay you know? but do you ever get burnt out because sometimes yeah. i'll i'll do that and i'll work out six days a week and then i just crash and i'm like i'm not touching the gym for two weeks mm -hmm. yeah well there's How do you times prevent that? well it comes with like having a reason so mm. i have to have like a reason when i don't have a reason to train then that's when i get burnt out and i get mm -hmm. bored and i'm like well you know this like what am I doing here? I'm spending so much time right, in this right. gym for for what? Like right now, I'm so focused and dedicated because I I just did uh, a film in Hawaii. Yes, and like oh, half so of the cool. film, I'm shirtless, so I'm like, I have to you have to be fit. I have to be fit. Right. And, yeah. Well, now it's funny because like most of the most of the things that I'm auditioning for, most of the roles that I'm landing right now, it's like. They keep adding it in there subtly. It's like <laughs> I'm reading the script, <laughs> and then it's like, and then he takes his shirt off, and I'm like, oh, oh man, all right, but yeah, do you, I'll, do you, I'll do it. Oh my do you god, I want people hire me because my body looks great. They're like, okay, and <laughs> she takes shirt, take okay. shirt off. No, it's a plus. But do you think? <laughs> does it bother you that you get typecast as that guy that's the the muscle man? the strong one in all the movies or you know i could see you playing a softy in a rom-com you know yeah well i've been i've been Keeping going to acting on. classes for so long and that's what i've been training for to be able to do anything to play right. any kind of role i think people are a little excited because i'm just now breaking into the acting world right. and, yeah and uh starting to do films and of course you know people get a little nostalgic with like you know, seeing seeing my dad and then I'm also fit and like have somewhat of a physique like yeah. similar. Not somewhat, uh, a physique. It's very, yeah, Let's not very similar player. to him. Uh, <laughs> you guys gotta look up his body. We'll put it on the show. <laughs> on the screen right here. We're gonna put it right next to your face. <laughs> so I think, I mean, people are just excited to, to see me do that kind of stuff and I love it anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, action, the action stuff is great. I'm prepared to do anything, to do the soft roles, to do like the really dramatic scenes, like right. yeah. the big breakup scenes. I don't know why I'm like- Those are the most- In my acting class, I don't know why I'm so good at those. <laughs> it's like, it's like, You're like do the I just cry scene. on command. I can just do it. I, I love, love it. the soft roles. That's, you, well, I was gonna say, cause one thing Sistine, and I, I mean, I have it too, but when it's in this industry, whether it's acting or social media, whatever, um, you get probably compared a lot to him. And I know that for us, like we're always feeling like this pressure to be great, especially yeah. when we get into like auditions or any situation where we're meeting someone and we have to execute something well. Do you ever feel that pressure? Do, like do people put assumptions on you before you walk into the room? Yeah, to an extent. Because, well, I know it's there. Mm -hmm. I know people have certain like expectations of, of what they think I'm going to be like or you know, they, they want me to do certain roles or say certain things that, that are just like my dad's, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Any, like, freaking interview, every time they always want me to say, I'll be back. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're oh, like, like we, stop it. Like, <laughs> we, get, we get Yo Adrian. They want us to say Yo Adrian yeah, all the time. It's for what? I did it, well, <laughs> I, 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 did, did, but did you ever it. do it? Because I did it one time and right after I was like, why the fuck would I do that? 
It's yeah. so embarrassing because yeah. I sound horrible. Did you ever say it? Not in like a serious interview, but like when I felt like peer pressured to around friends, yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. Okay. Sure, oh, you know? funny. Do you, I do mean, you have that pressure? Yeah, I think I think so, but I just don't let it really get to me because I know that I'm working so hard and working mm -hmm. like to do what I like to do and following my passions. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy. I'm training really hard and I know that I'm putting in 110%. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even though there is that pressure to maybe make something of myself, like I just know that me being happy and me doing what I want to do is is good enough. Right. And that's going to show throughout your career because a lot of people, because we are children of famous parents, they're going to just assume that, okay, everything is handed to you. You didn't have to work that hard, but for, you're a clear example. Like time will tell, like you're working hard, you're putting in the hours, you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing and it's all going to fall into place. Yeah. Now, when I was trying to be an actress, <laughs> trying is the key word there. Mm -hmm. You were doing it. Sure. Ian by but, fork. I but, think that's the but, you know, it just, it wasn't my cup of tea. And uh, I always say I have a better chance of going to the moon than becoming an actor. But my dad always gave me really good advice when it came to that business and navigating it, the people, the auditioning. Does your dad ever help you with your auditions or does he give you advice advice when you're on set? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure uh, your dad does the same thing. But I mean, my, my dad really just gives me like the most generic. Like, not generic, because it's like really good advice, but it's like, oh, I feel like I already knew that. What's an right. example? Like with acting and stuff, it's it's always about the reps. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah just mean? practicing, practicing until you can just say it while, you know, I mean, everyone always comes to me is like, how do you learn all these lines? And I'm like, well, it's through the reps. And it's like, that's what my dad told me, because uh, once you're able to say these lines while like washing dishes or like mm -hmm. doing your laundry you know, someone trying to interrupt you, then you can say them whenever. Because you know, oh, yeah. right, when right. when the camera's going and you're saying these lines, you have the the boom stick in your face, the camera's moving yeah, around. it's a different pressure. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. the, the guy, the, you know, your scene partner misses a line or something. And so you kind of like have to improv or mm -hmm. whatever. A car is passing by, so they have to cut it right there. And you just have to like yeah, roll with, with it. it. You know, there's nothing you can really do realized. about it. And you've been saying you're doing a ton of films lately, which I'm really excited to hear about. Like, how many films have you done, like, the last year or two years? Yeah, so in the last year, I've done three films. Wow. That's um, amazing. One I'm really excited for that's that's coming out soon is uh, The Chariot, which is with John Malkovich. Oh. Um, so that'll be a fun one. That's like a, like a, a sci-fi thriller. But one that I'm really excited for that I'm going to be filming next month is Bunker 13, which is like a military action film. Oh, that is and so you. It's so me. So and like you. the character, the, the character that I auditioned for and, and uh, that they wanted me for, I was like, this is me. This, like, yeah. this is so I love freaking it. it's me. Clicking. Like I'm so yeah. down. Man, I want to spoil it, but oh don't my God. Say I don't know. Well, you'll have to come back uh, when you're doing your press tour for yes, it. Yes, uh, the we'll next press tour. Everything. I love oh my it. God. Do you have any horrible stories? Uh, maybe while you were on set or during an audition, because there are so many times where I have just completely shit the bed when it came to acting in front of people. Do you have any sort of embarrassing moments that happened to you on set? Um, embarrassing moments, not yet. Okay, that's I'm good. I'm sure it'll happen, but I did have a really bad experience uh, in this last film. The experience in general was great. Shooting la lava in Hawaii was like that. Sounds awesome. It was fun. Yeah, it was it I'll was really that. a great film, and I'm I'm super excited for that one to come out in summer. But there was one day that was for some reason just so happened to be the coldest day Hawaii's ever had. Oh no! Yeah, was your shirt off on this day? Yes. Oh, oh no no. But oh no, it was. We were supposed to do an under. So some of the scenes are underwater, where I'm like running with the rock or like free diving oh, and wow. i know how to do all those kinds of things but we went as to one the, does as one how does to run underwater as they were saying man of many trades um, <laughs> obviously to continue <laughs> um, yeah so so we go to the beach and i'm like in my in my swim trunks and like in a t-shirt ready to go mm -hmm. i'm freezing but it's like you know we're gonna get in the water it's not a big deal and i'll dry off but no the water was crazy it was like, oh God, it was going nuts. And like all the professionals were like, yeah, not even we'll get into this water. And there were no other beaches that were stop. And so you had to that get were still. So we ended up skipping that. I passed out in the car and woke up at the next set location. 
right away. And I thought we were going to go to the hotel and change. Oh, and so you had to like go. So I was still in my board shorts and like t-shirt, like ready, ready for a beach day, but it's like windy. It's raining. Oh, so it's no cold. Idea. And I'm oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like freezing. And then I'm going to get really vulnerable here. I was so constipated. I'm like, <laughs> the, that, I don't know why. I don't know if it was, they yes, were feeding we're me like keeping it on wax. On yes. wax. Uh, I don't oh know if they were what, what they were feeding me, but I just like I was so bloated and, and had a full. I had the worst stomach ache. It's set food. Miserable, cold, freezing, <laughs> constipated. Oh my gosh! And then I'm waiting there. The so I get to the next set. The crew is not nowhere to be found. No, they're like an hour away. And so I'm like, dude, sitting there. Oh, so God. I'm sitting there for like. An hour for them to get there, and then two hours for them to like set everything <gasps> up, get everything ready. Oh god! The mud is crazy, so that it's like even longer for okay. them to set up. I woke up at five, and then got to this next location at like nine. Mm -hmm. Waited for them to set up by twelve, and I didn't have my scene until ten p.m. Oh jeez! So See, I was just the sitting there part, doing nothing, waiting around. Oh god! And I hated that. I was like. The, <laughs> which I felt really bad doing this, but the director was like, what's going on, man? You, you don't look too good. I was like, I'm pissed. He's like, I'm this pissed sucks. and I can't shit. Yes. This sucks and I'm freezing and I'm hungry, kind of. Yeah. yeah. I get it. It was like everything came out and I was just like, I was like, dude, this sucks. Like, come on, we gotta, we gotta go. But we ended up shooting the scene that night and uh, I was just so focused to like, Get, get out of there and get it. And I was like, everyone better be on their shit right now. Oh, like yeah. I didn't want to be an asshole, but we were like, I've been waiting here for twelve hours. Yeah, I, I was like, I was go. like, guys, we need to focus right now. Like the cast and crew, I was like, guys, let's let's we're a team. Mm -hmm. Let's freaking do this yeah. and just get it out of the way. I don't want to be here anymore. Like we all need to go. Like this is a yeah. terrible location. So we killed it in like the first two scenes. And there's a really sick scene with a horse. Okay. That, I know how to ride horses as well. So but, but as one does. are you shirtless on the horse? Yes. As this one, director knows what he's doing. As one does. <laughs> as one does. So I had a recommendation. I'm going to spoil this scene, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. Because it's sick. I'm so stoked about it. <laughs> I'm riding this horse shirtless, all damaged up and like about to pass out. And the girl that I'm like saving yeah. is like, she's like, oh, my my name in the film is Alex. She's like, Alex. And I like snap out of it and I, I pick her up and put her on the horse. But with one That's, hand? With one arm. Did That's you have to pretty do that yourself? Cool. It was my idea and they were like, can you do it? And I was like, oh yeah, oh, I can do it. And I did it first try. I was oh, like, hell yeah. Oh. What, if, what if you couldn't do it? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the thing. fell off with the horse. Well, oh, the horse was so agitated. He was so tired. Like he was- Yeah, very, he's like, I'm tired of this guy bringing more bodies on my back. Well, not just that. He was just tired of wait. He was waiting as long as I did. The horse is waiting as well. The horse is a paid actor. Yes. The horse is not getting his. Uh, yeah, the horse needs a raise. Yeah, he does need a raise. I agree with That's that. He hard. wasn't. He was in union. Uh, uh, <laughs> he's not. He's not SAG. Yeah, he's not SAG. Oh yeah. Wait, so, but yeah. that's badass. Okay. It so, was cool. Yeah. I, and like, I surprised myself. I was like, how was I? How did I do that? It was I'm telling you right now, if you clip that and put it on like your Tinder profile mm -hmm. or whatever dating app you're on. <laughs> You're gonna get endless dates. Yeah, that's true. I, I can't do the dating apps. You can't. You can't. I can't. So you never used one? I've tried them out. I've tried like. Yeah, which ones have you used? I've tried Hinge and Raya. Ah, those, same here. Those yeah. are ours. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't you work. Know, it's no good. Well, it's just like we match, and then I hate the little, Mess you know, the message. Yeah, I hate messaging. Do people send you the weirdest messages? No. Really? I feel like girls Not aren't like as super weird, weird as but guys are. Honestly. That's true. Yeah. Do you yeah. have like a type you swipe for? No. Oh man. Yeah, you I do. Do I? I feel like yeah. you do. What do you think my type is? I don't oh. know. I remember. Okay, so the one that I, I remember, feel like the girl from was blonde, but then you had another girl. Oh, you're single, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. I've been Are single you single for a little? This is like the longest I've been single. How long, How long have you been single? single? Like a year and a half, or almost. Two oh years, yeah. boo hoo! Oh, I know. By the way, Sophia, shut up. No, but <laughs> so okay. Bitter. I've had three. <laughs> I've had three relationships. My first girlfriend was three years, and that was like from junior year That's to sophomore year. That's a long time. Was this the one year. that I kind of remember? No, then oh, then oh, for high school. Okay. Yeah, then going into my junior year of college, that's when I started dating the girl the, that we know. Yeah. Okay. And then we broke up after a year and a half, and then 
my third girlfriend, we also dated for a year and a half. So, uh, but you're oh. okay. It sounds like you're very good at holding a relationship. For a I long love time. relationships. So you're a relationship, relationship guy. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Uh, and like, I I've just been hanging out. Did you have bad breakups or easy breakups? I don't think any breakups really easy. Mm, That's bad. true. Were, sounds like bad. Really it sounds bad. like there was. Is I'm there blocked kidding. numbers? <laughs> no, no. Well, I'm blocked, but <laughs> oh, Joseph, we're all three. Because you were saying all anything. three. No, 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 no. Oh, from the second one, the one that no you. No way. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was that one was that one was crazy because it was like she broke up with me and then blocked my ass, and I was like, "What did I do?" Oh, yeah, what that's I what do? I did one time. Ladies, you gotta mute them. <laughs> Don't block the them because then you look crazy. Yeah, just but mute. I think she blocked me because uh, I found out. A month later, she went back to her ex. Oh. And I was like, ah, okay, that makes sense. She didn't want him to oh. see or she didn't want him to reach out and yeah. talk about it. That's kind of, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I never that weird? know how to. Oh, I don't know if you guys it? know the band Lainey, but I was like listening to Lainey like Wait. crazy. Wait, I love that you just poured your your emotions into a band because I do no, that with he every in the band? breakup. Huh? Is that what you're saying? He's in the band? No, no, no. No, that yeah, he just listened I just, like, to Lainey. Oh, I, oh, I listen oh. to music like crazy. Yeah. Like, I listen to music based on like how I'm feeling every day and... So whenever That's I go hard. on a really bad date or I had a thing with a guy that I thought was going to work out, date six, it doesn't work out, I just get invested into a band that I've never heard of and I'll listen to them for the next two months. Get all emo. Get so emo or dark and then I snap out of it. Yeah. So I do the same thing. It so makes Lainey you feel was, so much better. It makes you feel so good. I'm on yeah. a disclosure bender. <laughs> disclosure? Okay, I 20, love disclosure. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> not their like, okay, not Tumblr their girl. <laughs> generic stuff like they're like really edm-y so stuff. you've like had music. you've had a lot of yeah, successful weird. relationships i would call them do you ever get nervous when you're bringing them to introduce to arnold because i know whenever i bring them or sophie brings home a guy to introduce to sly it is a complete disaster yeah. and we actually dread it and we withhold that for as long as we possibly That's can true. why what does he do Doesn't he's talk. just he's so intimidating and first of all the whole stigma of People don't look at him like a dad or a father or a husband. They look at him like Rambo or Rocky. So when they come right. to the door, yeah, they know. assume he's his character. But really, he's the opposite because he's so introvert that he almost has no social cues sometimes. He's hilarious. He's funny, but only when you really when know, you know him. him. Yeah. He's not good true. first impression. So the guys, of course, are so nervous because they're like, okay, he's going to break my hand. And then he doesn't say hello. And it just gets super awkward. So do you ever have awkward interactions for you? On your own? No, well, I mean, I've only introduced those three girls to. And how was it? It was fine. And my That's dad's like, guys. I mean, I also have to point out that with my relationship with my dad, it was it took a little while for uh, me and him to get really right. yeah. close and just like I can joke around with him totally uh, and talk about anything, like right? Girls and so, stuff like that. Yeah, but, well, because I was always I grew up with my mom and like right. I was just always nervous and right, like I didn't right. want him to think bad of me totally. and be like, oh, like what the heck is this guy doing? Like he's yeah. just partying all the time, right? Or like. Well, you definitely right. are not doing that. Well, I, I mean, know. you're the most hard person. No, but I person. think, honestly, a lot of kids feel that same pressure. I know that I did, too. I feel like for the first 16 years of my life, um, I was just sort of the daughter, and I never had that mature click. But I think because our dads are in such an older generation that they almost relate to us more easily now that we're adults. And they can talk to oh, us yeah. about more adult yeah. things, and it's an easier banter and relationship. So yeah. I, I think a lot of people can relate to that. Well, now it's now it's like awesome, right? Yeah. Now I'm like so close to to my dad, and we joke around about everything. And he always want he always wants to hear about the drama. Like <gasps> really, that's always, why I love it. He's like, tell me everything. Tell me the drama. Oh, like, I love tell that. Tell me about tell me about the girls, and I'm like, like. Does he ever give you dating advice? Oh yeah. <gasps> oh, oh let's hear I'm it. interested. Well, because he Sly, we say is genuinely one of the best people to get dating advice from because he knows the guy's brain so he'll tell us exactly what he's thinking he's, he shakes as brutal as it, yeah yeah but like, well, what would be your let opinion? me go back to your question really quick the introducing the girls to him yeah has been great because he's like he is outgoing and he's just yeah. like he's so casual with it mm -hmm. and just like whenever i've introduced uh brought a girl over for dinner or something we we've always like dressed like not similar no, no, not or, like super nice, but okay, just dressed up a little. Yeah, dressed up a like little, little bit. Like a little presentable. But then he, yeah. he's like in his sweats. 
<laughs> and he's just like, he's like, what do you, what are you guys dressed up for? And we're just like, oh. yeah, no, we're trying to make a good first impression here. <laughs> we're like trying to be nice yeah. here, yeah. Yeah, they they always get nervous at, like at the beginning, but then you know my dad just like makes some jokes and they're then they're warmed up. Yeah, but every time on the first dinner, it's always been like they're just like you know all quiet. The girls, yeah, are, you know, they're like, oh yeah, nervous. you don't have an icebreaker because whenever it's one of us bringing a guy home, like I know actually. Sistine's boyfriend is meeting the family for the first time this and weekend. I'm dreading it. Whoa. So I, know. I know. That's I, big time. I know, because they're, they're in Florida and they've been dating for a bit and they would have met. He's, she's met his He's family. in Florida? No, oh, the boyfriend's here, but the parents are in Florida. So this, ah. they've been dating for a bit, but they haven't had the opportunity to meet the parents. And I just. Uh, but it's, what I'm saying is, I just you guys don't have like, an icebreaker. Like, I will be the icebreaker. Even though there's right. not going to be that much of an Sophia's ice to the break, buffer. but and my mom's I'm the, the buffer. buffer too. Yeah, yeah, she's like crazy. If I was sitting next to you and I was like, "Oh my God, it's Arnold," I'd be so nervous as well. First impression? Are you kidding? Yeah, right. Yeah, you want to make a good first oh impression. God. So, but... what's a piece of dating advice that he gives you? Man, I'm trying to think of some of the stuff that he's told me. Well, I don't know if I should say any of this actually. Oh, <laughs> oh how, how about this? It, what's you, the most PC? PC? I was gonna say, what's like the most PC? It's not that it's PC, but I just don't want to like. I don't. Him. I don't want to like target anyone. You know? Oh, okay, got it. Got you know it. what I mean? Like girls? Yeah. Like, oh, okay, gotcha. Well, I mean, yeah. Okay. Back to Sly's advice. The problem is you're smart because you're saying you don't want to target anyone, whereas Sophia and I get so specific with the, the details of our exes that they know we're talking about them and it will bite you in the ass. So yeah. you're smart yeah. for keeping it. No, to I've yourself. heard I've I've listened to a few of your podcasts and oh. I'm like I'm like, oh, I bet if I knew this guy, I knew exactly who they're talking about. Yeah, they'll approach us about it. They and do. they say, you know what? What the hell? Did your dad really break up with me? I'm like, yeah, he yeah, did. a little bit. It was his words. Yeah. Um, let's talk. You just brought up podcast. And you have a brand new podcast called Opposite Ends. I do. So yes. tell us about that. Well, Opposite Ends is, uh, yes, brand new podcast. We just launched this year about, what's the date today? The 12th, 13th? The 13th. Yeah, 13 days ago. Um we basically are bringing people on to talk about their career path, kind of like their life path, and talk about how it, how they came from one end to the other, the complete opposite ends. Kind of just breaking down the, well, let me explain the reason why I came up with this idea mm -hmm. was when I graduated college, um, I was getting rejected like crazy from all these different auditions. Mm -hmm. And so, and I thought right away I was going to get into acting. Right. Not the case. So I was like, you know, feeling lost and feeling like, oh, I don't have a purpose. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on with my life. Like I was all depressed and like all down about it because I didn't have mm -hmm. my thing. And I noticed more and more of my peers were feeling the same way. They're like, I don't like my job. I don't know what I really want to mm -hmm. do with my life. And so I came up with the, this idea and hope that I can kind of mitigate that and have these people with different career paths and different like life paths explain what they did, what they learned and kind of break it down and get into the nitty gritty so that someone like me or someone like that is just graduating high school, college or mm -hmm. into their next transition of life can just listen to that and be like, wow, that's really similar to what I'm going through. I wanna do the same thing or like, you know, he's doing what I think I wanna do but right. that doesn't sound like How it what started. I thought. What it you was thought the be process like. yeah. was. Well, I always call it post grad blues. Is when you graduate from college or high school or whatever it is, right? You're changing jobs. You feel this sense of sadness because you're like, "Am I doing the right thing? Am I behind in life? Am I like I want to make it here?" Because I think that with social media, we're always so surrounded by everyone being like successful and perfect. Oh, and yeah. like we look at the crash, it's like, "Oh, they make a million dollars with the post," or they like, and she's only what 21 years old or 22 years old, right? But realistically no one ever gets to be that like successful and famous within a week or in a day or whatever it is and so it's nice that you're breaking that down and showing okay you know these successful people didn't just get it instantly they had a lot of different paths my mom calls it you have to zig to zag to get right. to your end goal like it's always gonna be different you're gonna meet new people along the way so it's it's nice that you're breaking down that that idea that that's even attainable or normal to like become that rich and famous immediately after like you thought yeah. you're gonna get roles immediately but it's like not the case like mm -hmm. you're gonna get it takes a little while it takes yeah. a little while like we all need to be kind of patient especially Do you have a, a dream guest that you would love to have on your show besides sophia and i of course of course <laughs> you guys um yeah because we have a lot of 
uh, life experience that people want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Lots of change since I was 19 to 23. Uh, so let's just let me tell you. Ops and ends, really. Uh, a dream would probably be Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, uh, that would be. Because I, I love his story. Um, I love how he grew up in Portugal. Just, I mean, not saying that I love that he grew up like with nothing, but he his story is just so amazing how he, you know, uh, He's not underdog. not wealthy at all. Just you know, grew up in this, in in Portugal and kind of just made his way up and mm -hmm. went to Sporting and then got traded to uh, Manchester United yeah. and kind of just like broke out, mm -hmm. you know, and became this. I mean, the world's hottest uh, soccer, soccer player, player ever. You know, yeah, uh, and arguably the one of the best in the world. So, would you ever have your, I can't even speak. Would you ever have your dad on? Because we had our yeah. dad on. Yeah, that I was mean, interesting. You totally should. You should. Actually. Yeah, that would be a great interview. It'd it be would fun. be great. He has a great story too. So. He definitely he does. does. Yeah. Are you kidding? I mean, I mean, we've known your dad as well for like a really long time, and he right. just has so he's very funny too. I think people don't realize that. And I think that. that's why um, you definitely should have a mom because when we had our dad on, what surprised us the most was we were so nervous because we wanted it to be such a good interview because we didn't want to waste his time, and we knew it was like sort of our only shot to get right. it right. And we were shocked with the amount that he was so different from them, what people have seen That's him true. online because people didn't know he was funny or smart or witty or likes to goof with my mom all the time. And then having, you know, your dad sit across from you in sort of the same comfortable position, I think you're going to get mm -hmm. some incredible nuggets out of yeah. that interview. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. I just want to get better first yeah podcast is harder than you think right yeah totally it well is. even the first episode that we recorded i i listened to the first episode and then we're gonna be releasing the next episode on monday but uh this last episode i was like man i sound way better you know i'm mm -hmm. not i'm not like uh that's uh, why yeah. we waited what, like we waited we had 50 episodes until yeah. we would come on and we were gonna wait a couple more until we can get them yeah it takes a little again. while to get the traction on it there does too. Yeah. Definitely no it does. does you build the community and everything and it's yeah. oh no it definitely takes some time because it is such a saturated, saturated market. market like everyone is using podcasting so how can you stand out and then it does take like a year for people to go okay like this is legitimate they're not canceling the show within right. like two days because some people just can't do it but yeah. it's you'll pick it up. You just have to be consistent. With but yeah. my question is, how do you actually have time for everything? You're lifting, and if you're not lifting, you're on a movie set riding a horse shirtless. And if you're not doing that, you are working on your podcast. And if you're not doing that, you're selling a house. So how do you balance it all? And why did you even get into real estate, by the way? The reason I got into real estate was because uh, I needed a job. I needed okay. to like a good pay fair. my I needed to pay good my answer. rent. I needed to pay my bills because uh after college, really, um, and I'm really grateful that that my my dad helped me get through college. But right when college was done, it was just like, you go, you're on your own. I was like, right. oh shit. So yeah, I needed a job, and I was I was not getting any of the acting roles that I thought I was gonna get, and like starting to get paid. So I was like, I need to do something. So I started interning at a um, this real estate company, Aria Properties, which is the team that I'm on now with the mentality that like oh i know i'm gonna be a big movie star you know i know i'm gonna be in the movies i know i'm gonna do all these great things and real estate is like the big investment thing that interests me mm -hmm. right it's the most solid it's the most right. like like you you just it, it always you always benefit from real yeah. estate right yeah. so so i went in there i was like i want to just learn as much as possible while making some kind of income and then I enjoyed it and was like, oh, I kind of, I think I can do this pretty well. Mm -hmm. So I got my license and and now I'm Very like, good. it I'm sounded like when it. you said you were gonna be like a big movie. I feel like, are you a manifester or like do you visualize? Because it sounded like you're like, I'm gonna be a big movie star. Like this is. Oh what yeah, I well yeah. I, I mean, I never like to call it like manifesting because I feel like everyone's saying that nowadays. I but say it Sophia. all the time. Um, <laughs> What's wrong with it? No, there's nothing wrong with there's it. There's a lot wrong. No, with please, it. Don't, don't hurt me. <laughs> um, it's no, there's nothing easier. wrong with it. I just love like um, having a goal and then going for it. Yeah, you yeah. You know, whether it's like a super far goal, but with acting, I know that my goal is to, 
you know, be repu a reputable actor and, you know, win some awards, whether it's... Uh, I love that. I like that you say... You know. It's good to just say. I feel like I always downplay the things I want. I'm like, I want it, but like, am I going to actually get it? But I would love to touch on um, you saying that you want to be a reputable actor. And I saw in a recent interview that you decided to drop Schwarzenegger from your name. Do you think that, like, what was your decision and thought process behind it? Was it because you wanted to sort of make a name for yourself and show that you could do it on your own? Well, I mean, I never had the Schwarzenegger name in general because I, I mean, I, I... But you could easily use it, you know, especially in this acting world. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think really the the thing is that I just haven't really focused on, like, changing it i just mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm doing my own thing i haven't really thought about it that much of like mm -hmm. oh i need to change my my last name i have a last name already and i'm i'm just like i think it's cool know. yeah it's like a cool it is little... i'm already doing so much and i'm already succeeding and and you know moving forward with mm -hmm. my with my goals so i mean that's like the last thing on my on my mind yeah. right now I love that. like you said like you yeah. said I'm, I'm busy with all these different things yeah. so it's like uh, I don't want to put another thing on my plate mm -hmm. with like trying to do all that. I 20, love it. I see it. 2022, you're going to get a girlfriend. You're going to write Does another horse shirtless. Though? Do you want a girlfriend? Uh, I Maybe mean, he just wants so a horse. This, this do you want thing. a wife? I can uh, look. Wife? Oh, friends. wife? I can find some A friends. wifey? How old She's are you? She's single. I'm 24. <laughs> He's 24. I'm between you guys. That's right. 24. But, you know, wife seems, you're a little young for a wife right now. Yeah, I'm too young for a wife. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Unless it's like wifey girlfriend yeah yeah do you want a relationship like i said i love relationships i'm like super open to like mm -hmm. being in a relationship uh it just has to be a, the know, right one a, yeah i mean i don't want to waste my time and their time and again like i'm doing all these things so it has to be someone that that's able to work with me on that mm -hmm. and love relationships that. are all about sacrifice and and compromise so, you know, I'm willing to do certain, com like, I'm cer I'm willing to compromise in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But if my career is not what they see for them or it, it makes them really uncomfortable or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's not going to work out. Right. right? So totally. I agree. Make it work out, ladies. Sophia and I work. have a lot of single girls for you, let me tell you. That's true. Oh, really? I think we're better at setting people up than setting ourselves up. Yeah. I set you up. I think. Oh, actually, no. Gabby set you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was. Oh, never mind. Maybe I shouldn't. No, say I say it. it. Oh, no. I love uh, it. Say no, no. it. Say it. He just uh, pointed it's me. So embarrassing. What? It's you so say embarrassing. You wanted to say ask it. God, Sophia. Yeah. For ah, sure. yeah there we go. No, but okay. There so we that. Go. <laughs> oh my god. Can I gosh. tell you how many times though I've sat on this side of this room? <laughs> And there have been men that have sat on that couch saying the same thing about Sophia. And I'll just sit here twiddling like, my thumbs. Like, Go thanks. on. <laughs> I yeah, don't know it's what okay. to do. Well, it's all right. No, no, no. It's so Come on, <laughs> Sophia, flatter her. Flatter her. Yeah, tell me something else. Make her blush. No, what? Well, I, I mean, already dying already. There's enough foundation. No, I should. Okay, I've, I've messaged you a couple times. Ghosted. No, did I really? I followed her on Instagram. No follow back. You don't follow I was like, him. Like, dang, she's like, she's hard. She's tough. She's a tough nut to crack. I am I was actually. Like, no, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. It's not you. It's actually me. And I, when I say that, they all no, say. Uh, I know, but really, but really, anyone that knows me knows it's actually me. <laughs> call her out. Call her yeah, out. Please. She needs I had it. to. I had to. You call have you to un unwax. We gotta. Unwax yeah, you gotta keep it unwaxed. You know what? I'm loving this little spark. We're gonna continue this off camera. But Joseph, thank you so much. <laughs> There's actually a really embarrassing story. All right, about. finish the show with the. Story. I don't know if you remember, but so again, the Christmas party, the last Christmas party, the we infamous had. party, the infamous party. So you guys did your whole thing with the, with the pajamas and everything. Yes. I need that picture, by the way. That's hilarious. I will send you that I've picture. never seen that. What did I do? No, it's what I did. So your mom, oh, it, your mom's the best. Yeah. I love your mom. She's yeah. so she's so sweet. And she's like giving the presents out. And she's like, oh, take this blanket. And I'm like, all right. I actually right, get like, blankets yeah, always for. Yeah. I always use those things. I have them. No, so. I do too. Oh, they're I so soft. We have like yes. eight different blankets in our apartment. They're insane. So I have this blanket and then... You know, I'm saying bye to your mom. You come and say bye. And then you come and say bye. I'm like, okay, I have to just be like 100% honest. I would like the liquid courage was just flowing like crazy. It was in your veins. Oh my gosh. I completely forgot about this. Other note. Oh. My Uber was taking 20 minutes. So Sophia was like, 
I, I'm just going to call you one. And I got there in like five minutes. Oh, yeah. I'm, you call, I, I, you call, I'm, I'm, I'm good at that stuff. Yeah, you, you're just like, all right, I'm calling you Uber. And then uh, it was, I felt like, is she just like trying to get me out of here as soon as possible? But anyways, <gasps> so, so the liquid courage was flowing. And yeah. I'm like about to leave. And I'm like, I just have to be so honest with you. I have the fattest crush on you. No, wait. Oh, wait, like, I do remember You this. remember this. Yes. And I was, I was so embarrassed because... I was extra embarrassed because I think so you and your mom were like standing right there. And I was like, oh gosh, like, why am I doing this? I wait, wait, this. I got to mediate. I told her, I... What did she say? I don't even know what I said. Do you remember what Sophia said? I probably said, thank you. No, I mean, no. Did I, what did I, oh no. Sophia probably said your I Uber's forgot. here. <laughs> Dad, was I me at least nice? No, you were so nice. Okay, you were super good. nice about it. But then you, yeah, you were like, all right, you're. Your Uber's here. I was like, yeah. Savage on Christmas Eve. My God. I don't know if I got <laughs> my into God. me. It's I, all right. On the Sometimes Lord's Day. It, it took me a while you know, to get over my ex. So I'm blaming that. that. It was a big learning process. <laughs> it's a learning process. Oh, yeah. well, thank tough. Thank you, though. Oh, I mean, yeah. I love that. You're, you're handsome. He's I, like, I, 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 I flattered. Okay, I, I just hate like beating around the bush. I'm just like, I'm too. Say straight honest, up. Well, no, I think it's better to be straight up about something that you like want or like and why. I mean, because if it works out, then it works out. Yeah. You know, because if you don't say anything, some people are going to be like, oh, oh my yeah. Gosh. I, I hate the games. I hate the games. I love the games. And Sophia it. loves oh, the I'm games. Oh, I'm sure you love <laughs> the games. I'm sure you love. Yeah. I hate the, the oh, I, I can't text them until they text me first. And then like. That's not true. That's liar. I, you will oh, never I need to like ghost first. them for a little Please. bit so they miss me and all yeah. that stuff. I'm like, oh. I know it works every time. Okay. And she's single. So. Right. <laughs> that doesn't work every time. I know. She's she, like, she'll she's like, never I'm learn. still not going to follow him until. I know. I'll follow you this time. I'll do it right now after we I'm cut playing. the cameras. All right. Is anyone else schwitzing or is it just me? Schwitzing. It's pretty warm. That was intense. But um, I wanted to thank you so yeah. much for coming on the show today. You are awesome. And you're such a good podcaster. Like, yeah. You're going to oh, be yeah. so Thanks. successful. Oh this. Plug where everyone can find your social media, all your movies coming out, your podcast, everything. Yeah. Wait, do I just say it? Yeah. yeah. Go crazy. Yeah. Well, Instagram is at Projo2. Uh, I actually don't know my handles for anything else. Well, your podcast, podcast is do you have at a podcast? Opposite Ends. Uh, the do you have podca a podcast um, Instagram? Yeah. Oh, at yeah. Opposite Ends. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, Watch out for movie. Lava that's yes. coming out. Um, oh, there you go. The Chariot. And Bunker 13. <laughs> Let's be the good get one. it. If you want to see him shirtless on a horse like we all do, make yes. sure you check that movie out. Thank you again so much for coming on. Thanks and for thank having you me. guys for tuning in this week to Unwaxed. We will see you next Tuesday. Bye, y'all. Bye.